All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all worlds, who says in his ever-glorious book, Help one another to do what's right and good. Do not help one another towards sin and hostility. Be mindful of Allah, for his punishment is severe. <clears throat> I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and that our master, Prophet Muhammad, is his valary and messenger. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, his household, companions, and upon those who follow their path, to the Day of Judgment. Islam has built a real state, laid down its foundations, established its components, urged us to preserve it, and made the protection of its public interests a common responsibility among all its members. The more those members become aware of the significance of public interest, the more they will cooperate to preserve it. In this way, the community becomes strong and coherent, as the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, The relationship of the believer with another believer is like the bricks of a building. Each strengthens the other. The Prophet, peace be upon him, illustrated this by interlacing his fingers of both hands. The Prophet, peace be upon him, also said, The believers in their <clears throat> mutual kindness, compassion, and sympathy are just like one body. When one of its limbs suffers, the whole body responds to it with wakefulness and fever. Undoubtedly, one of the most important elements of preserving public affairs is to give preference to the public interest that benefits all people over, over the narrow private interest that only avails certain individuals. This value aims at purifying the human soul from evils of selfishness. The public interest includes all material and moral benefits that revive the whole society, achieve goodness for all humans, and protect them from evil. Such values bring about security, stability, and integrity of lands. Moreover, achieving the welfare of the whole society is the core of adopt adopting jurisprudence of priorities. The Holy Quran affirmed the necessity of preserving the public interest and preferring it to the private one. This is the approach of all the prophets. The Almighty Allah did not send a prophet but to bring happiness for his people without any financial compensation or worldly benefit. Prophet Noah, peace be upon him, said, My people, I ask no reward for it from you. My reward comes from Allah. I will not drive away the faithful. They are sure to meet their Lord. I can't I can see you I can see you are foolish. The Almighty Allah also reported the statement of Prophethood, peace be upon him, saying, I ask no reward from you, my people. My reward comes from him who created me. Why do you not use your reason? Also Prophet Shuai, peace be upon him, said, I only want to put things right as far as I can. I cannot succeed without Allah's help. I trust in Him and always turn to Him. The provisions of the moderate Sharia came in accordance with reason. Thus, it called for whatever achieves the public interest of all citizens of the state, including meeting the necessary needs of the society and caring for the circumstances of the real world. Thus, if the society is in need for building hospitals for the sick people, then this is the priority. If the society needs schools, their maintenance, equipment, helping students, then this is the priority. If, however, there is a need for facilitating marriage for the needy young people, the payment of debts, then this is the priority. Since the, f the fulfillment of people's needs is religious and national duty. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, He is not a believer whose stomach is filled while his neighbor to his side is hungry. And he knows it. Another public interest is the preservation of public property. This property is shared by all citizens, and the sanctity of such public ownership is more demanding than the sanctity of private one. Due to the multiple owners involved in this case. This is why Islam warned against any violation of this ownership. The Almighty Allah says, anyone who dishonestly takes something from the battle gains will carry it with him 
on the day of resurrection, when each soul will be fully repaid for what it has done. No one will be wronged. <clears throat> Public property is an ownership for all people and not for, all, for a specific group. Those responsible for it are just the trustees to save, collect, and spend it, but they do not own it personally. This is why it is not permissible for one to abuse it or consume it. Otherwise, it would be an act of treason and injustice. <clears throat> Islam also ordered the preservation of public facilities, such as the places of worship, schools, hospitals, parks, etc., as they belong to all citizens and avail them all. Islam severely warned against abusing, wasting, or spoiling these facilities in any way, as the Almighty Allah says, and do not cause corruption in lands after it has been set in order. This is to refute the misconception that one can misuse the public domain in any way he wants, on the pretext that he owns it. This is a misunderstanding. What we are obliged to do is to preserve and protect public facilities because they do not be belong to a specific individual or group of people in a given time. It is for all people and for future generations. These public interests also include <coughs> preserving roads and giving them their due rights. The Prophet peace be upon him said, avoid sitting by the roadside. The people then said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, we cannot do without those meeting places in which we converse. So he said, well, if you insist on that, give the road its due right. They asked, what are the, do, the road's due rights? He replied, lowering your gaze abstaining from anything of offensive, returning salutations, enjoining the right and forbidding the evil. The Prophet peace be upon him also said, faith has over 70 or, 70 or 60 branches, the most excellent of which is the declaration that there is no God but Allah, and the humblest of which is the removal of what's injurious from the path, and modesty is a branch of faith. These public interests also include performing military service, which is one of the most important duties performed by a man towards his religion and homeland. It is a proof of one's loyalty, sincerity, and love for his country. Homeland is no less important than religion, honor, or properties. Performing this national military service instills in one's heart the meanings of stronghold, greatness and noble values cherished by our true religion of Islam. <clears throat> Among the public interests that should be observed is to preserve agreements between the home country and other states, organizations, or institutions. Any jurisprudential fatwa or ad advocacy measure must be institutional. Whoever speaks in such matters should take into consideration all societal national and international circumstances related to the subject matter, so as to avoid hasty and individuals, individual opinions that contradict the reality or oppose the international laws, treaties, and, con and conventions. <clears throat> Allah the Almighty ordered us to keep our promises. He Most High says, O oh, you who believe, fulfill your contracts. <clears throat> This verse refers to all kinds of contracts, promises, and obligations to which a man should adhere. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Muslims will be held to their conditions, except the conditions that make the unlawful lawful, lawful or the lawful unlawful. That's why the Prophet, peace be upon him, by virtue of the terms and conditions of the Hudaybiyah Treaty with the disbelievers of Christ, ordered Abu Basir to go back to Mecca, even though he knew that this companion might be hurt. The Prophet, peace be upon him, did so as a result of his covenant with Quraysh, which is a kind of keeping promises and trusts on one hand and fulfilling contracts on the other. It has also to do with giving precedence to the public interest to the individual one. 
Discussion of the public issues without being aware of them is so dangerous that it might undermine the state and its foundations, since it destroys its security, stability, and makes it vulnerable to mockery. With that said, I ask Allah for forgiveness for me and for you. <clears throat> all praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all worlds. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness that our Master Prophet Muhammad is his votary and messenger. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, his family, companions, and whoever follows their guidance to the Day of Judgment. Muslim brothers, the concept of public interests surpasses individuals' limited interests. For this reason, it is not left to all people to engage in it. Rather, it is the duty of the specialized people who are fully aware of the importance of the national security tasks entrusted to them, including people's life and interests, states' property, together with their political, social security, and scientific issues. Scholars believe that if a mujtahid, that's a person who performs personal reasoning, is right, he will have twofold reward, and he, if, if he is wrong, he will have just one reward. This indicates that if someone practices ijtihad even though he is not entitled to do so, he will be sinful for issuing fatwas without knowledge, even if his opinion is correct. Otherwise, the sin of his mistake will be twofold for issuing fatwas without well established knowledge and for the mistake he made. Allah Most High says, Ask people of knowledge, Ahl al dhikr, if you don't know. Ahl al dhikr are those who are specialized in particular fields of knowledge. <coughs> for this reason, it is prohibited to issue fatwas without knowledge or sharia proof. In this regard, Allah the Almighty says, Then, who is more unjust than one who invents a lie about Allah to mislead people by something other than knowledge? Indeed, Allah does not guide the wrongdoing people. Senior companions and followers used to used not to issue fatwas as they were fully aware of its enormity. Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him, said, What sky would cover me, and what land would shelter me if I explain the book of Allah without knowledge? Al Shabi was once asked about a question, whereupon he said, I do not know. His students thus said to him, We felt embarrassed for your sake. Whereupon he replied, The angels did not feel embarrassed when they said to Allah, We had no knowledge except that which you taught us. Abdul Rahman ibn Abi Layla is reported to have said, I met 120 companions from the Ansar who, if asked a question, used to circulate the question among themselves until it goes back to the first one whom it was offered first. Protection of the public interest is a common duty. Each of us should protect the society according to his position and ability. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, Surely every one of you is a guardian and is responsible for his subjects. <coughs> Many people might not seriously consider the danger resulting from their speech or writings or what they share on the social networks. They might even view it a form of entertainment, not realizing that making and spreading rumors among people are means of destruction that are used by the evildoers in their conflicts with the righteous. Thus, when you see the members of the supposed to be one nation suspecting and accusing another, one another of betrayal, in this regard the Prophet peace be upon him said, it is enough of a lie for a man to narrate all what he hears. Allah Most High ordered us to carefully investigate matters and not to follow the characters. He the Almighty says, O oh, you who believed, if there comes to you a disobedient with information, invis investigate, lest you harm a people out of ignorance and become over what you have done regretful. Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him said, Deliberateness is from Allah and haste is from Satan. And there is hesitation in everything except in the actions of the next world. 
We are in a dire need to be fully aware of the importance of the public opinion issues, to give precedence to the public interest, and to fully realize the conspiracies plotted against us. So let's take admonition from other countries and not fall prey to the conspiracies made by the enemies of religion and nation. Let's be united and firmly adhering to the truth so that we would not fall prey to the traps of those awaiting to destroy us. Let's spread trust among us and cooperate to do good. That good, that good's effects will shower us all. O oh Allah, help us perform the duties of our nation. Keep our peoples, our rulers, our army and police forces safe. O oh Allah, make our beloved Egypt and all world's countries safe, secure and prosperous.